UV casting resin. I don't know if this is gonna be a fantastic replacement for two-part resins for casting little bits, or if it's gonna be a silly little gimmick product, but I got my hands on some. I'm gonna test it out today, and I'm gonna try to find out. Hey guys, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. On this Reviews Day Tuesday, I wanna try out this UV resin from Green Stuff World. They sent me this stuff a little while ago. It's been sitting on my desk. I haven't tried it yet, but today I figured I'd finally test it out. Full disclosure, I have a casual working relationship with Green Stuff World. They often send me boxes of goodies of their new stuff to see what I think to try it out. Sometimes I make videos about that stuff. Sometimes I don't, I'm under no obligation. But when I do, they typically set up a promo code so that you guys can get some extra value out of these videos and get a little discount. And I do get a small commission from those if you guys use them. Now, the funny thing is that I decided to make this video pretty last minute. They don't even know I'm making it. I did reach out to see if they'd set up that promo code for you guys for this stuff. And as soon as I get it, I will put it in the video description below. But if it's not there immediately, that's why I expect they probably will set one up for you guys. Now this resin, I believe, designed to replace two-part resins for casting small little bits. Now the appeal of this is that you don't need to mix two different parts. And if you just wanna cast a couple very small, tiny little bits, this is more practical than mixing because it, it is hard to mix small batches of resin. The other cool thing about it is that it shouldn't go bad in the bottle. Two-part resins do tend to have a limited shelf life once you open them. According to them, the, this is good indefinitely as long as it is not exposed to the UV light that causes it to cure. So. I don't know how long it'll actually last, but in theory, it's supposed to last a very long time or forever. The other really neat thing about this is that apparently it can be tinted with acrylic inks. So I'm gonna give that a shot. I already know what some of you are thinking talking about UV resin for casting though, because you're probably having the exact same thought that I had when they sent me this, which is, well, UV resin is already on the market for 3D printing for printers like the Photon. So is this just, a small repackaged bottle of that printer resin? Because that was my first thought. Couldn't you just buy a big bottle of that and one of these UV lights and go to town? I asked Green Stuff World and they actually told me that no, it is not the same stuff. And the reason it's not the same is that that was their first idea too when developing this product. They actually tried that. They did a bunch of tests and they found that that particular resin when using it as a casting resin was far too brittle for their liking. It was also more liquidy and more prone to bubbles. So they actually did develop a different resin. I don't know the chemical differences of it, but it is apparently much, much stronger. And it's also a more gel-like consistency, which makes it a little bit better for casting little bits. It's a bit easier to work with and apparently has less bubbles. So that's that's what they said. I'll take their word for it. Let's try it out. I'm, ex I'm excited to try this stuff. Let's cast some things. All right, so there are two components to this product. There is the UV resin itself that they sell in a few different size bottles. This is a 17 mil bottle. Same as you're gonna find as most dropper bottle paints. They also sell it in bigger bottles. This one is 30 milliliters, and I think they also have a, another size available, but I could be wrong. These two are the same product. I'm gonna open up this one because it's smaller, and I might as well use that one first. Then there is the UV flashlight, and this is what you use to speed up the curing of this resin. Now you can actually just cure this outside in the sunlight, but it's gonna take a lot longer. I think this stuff they say takes about two to four minutes with the flashlight, but outside it's gonna take a few hours depending on sunlight. If it's really sunny, it's gonna go fast. If it's cloudy, it's gonna go slow. So this is handy, do it right here. Now I will say right off the bat, that while this is a <clears throat> Green Stuff World branded UV flashlight, this is just a UV flashlight. You can buy these online in different places. They are available on Amazon and 
I'm going to include links to this product on Green Stuff World's website, but I'm also gonna include links to a alternative on Amazon for basically the same flashlight or some other ones in different sizes. But when I quickly looked, uh, actually the Green Stuff World one was cheaper than on amazon.com, even with the exchange rate into euros, but shipping is a factor, whatever. But I'm gonna give you all those options so that you guys can compare. Now we need something to actually cast this in. So let me grab a small mold. So these are a few small silicon molds that I have made myself in the past and I've used them with typical two-part resin uh, stuff from Smooth On so I know that the molds are good and work well. So it's a good way to cast. I got a few really small items so I think I'm just going to give those a shot first. Okay so this actually bottle is a little bit different than your typical dropper bottle. It has a very small needle-like point which is going to be better for doing accurate stuff. I'm going to try this little skull here that I sculpted. Ooh, this stuff is thick actually. This came out thicker than I expected. I would say this is the consistency of gel super glue. So I got a little skull here, got a very tiny little hinge and a door handle. I'll close this up before I put the light on it because I don't want this accidentally curing. It is in a very dark black opaque bottle so hopefully that does its job in preventing the curing. I'm gonna do the same thing I normally would if this was two part resin and just give it a little bit of agitation shaking here to get some bubbles out, although I don't see any. They said on their website that you can use heat to pop bottle, bubbles before casting. So now, the little flashlight here. I don't actually know how long to hold this. We're gonna grab a toothpick so we can keep testing if it's hard yet. When using two-part resin, it will cure faster the more resin there is. So a very small item will actually cure more slowly than a large item, and that's because it's curing from a chemical reaction and it heats up and the more resin there is, the faster that process. I don't know if that's gonna be the same case with this stuff. My guess, and it's only a guess, is that small items probably actually will cure faster because the light can hit it quicker. I don't know, I could be totally wrong. It could also be slower on small things. So this has already been less than a minute. I just wanna tap it. Oh, it's already hard. This has been under one minute of this light and it's already hard. Now let's try to pop this out. That was definitely under one minute. Comes out of the mold easily and it appears to have worked perfectly. This is clear resin so it's gonna be hard to show you but let me grab something and put it on. So it cast these small items incredibly quick. It held all the details which I know is difficult for you guys to see with the clear resin on such small items, but I can tell that it got in and held all the details pretty good. I wonder how strong it is though. This is a very thin, tiny little door hinge that is about a millimeter thick, so it's about as fragile as it gets. And well, you know what, right now it's, it bends a little bit which is nice, it's not snapping. This may be similar to two-part resin in the sense that it cures and gets hard, but then over some time turns to a harder, you know, more stiff material, but this isn't gonna break when you pop it from the mold. This is really good. Pretty, pretty happy about this because if I was building something and I just wanted one of these door hinges and I didn't have it already cast, I would be, I not would be, I have been many times in the past reluctant to mix up a batch of resin just to cast something small like this so I just don't bother. Whereas this allows you to actually just do that, just cast one thing. This one is pretty stiff actually. It's, let's try to break it. Okay, so it does break if I really try to snap it, but I mean, this is a tiny little piece. This is plenty strong. You could cast a sword on a miniature and it would be fine for play. This is as strong as a typical plastic is going to be. It's not gonna be as durable as something like the Reaper Bones material that bends, but it's gonna be the same as any resin or plastic mini. So I'm pretty impressed with that. Now that was a really small item. So let's cast something a little bit bigger here. I got this steel door. Now this is a difficult thing to cast because it has all these little 
tiny rivets and you often, even with two-part resin, get bubbles in these points. Usually I would powder my mold with uh, baby powder for two-part resin, but I'm actually not sure if that would have an adverse effect on this stuff and I haven't worked with it enough to feel comfortable trying that yet. So I'm just gonna try it straight. I have a feeling with the gel, it might be hard to get in all those little surfaces. I'm not really sure, but we're gonna see. I do think that this is a bigger item than I would probably be using this product for. For items this large, I would likely just default to two-part resin because why not? It's big. A lot of the advantages to this, in my opinion, I think are for doing quick, small things without having to mix. Are some bubbles here, and you know what? I happen to have my heat gun on hand plugged in from something else. So let's see if we can pop these bubbles. That sort of worked. It popped about half the bubbles. It popped the ones on the surface. There are some that I can still see in here that didn't pop that are in the middle, hopefully not on the surface of the piece. That kind of worked. Now I'm gonna time how long this takes to cure. Ooh, you can really see it going. It's transparent so you don't see it the same as some of the white resins, but I definitely saw an interesting <laughs> visual effect just take place there where it all kind of looked like it crystallized. I am noticing a slight odor from this stuff. It definitely has a smell, but it's not too strong and it's not too offensive. If it was really strong, I think the smell would be very off-putting, but uh, it's not too bad. Not that much different than other resins. So now we're just over a minute here and it's hard and it actually looks like it's kind of breaking free from the mold itself. So let's just see if we can pull it. Okay, we're at a minute and 20 seconds and I've pulled it from the mold and it is stiff, possibly not fully cured, but in one minute I have a resin cast door. I didn't have to mix anything. It worked. I don't have any air bubbles that I can see. There's one little one that pops off just like two-part resin. Yeah, it got in all the little spots. No complaints here. Again, it's kind of hard for you guys to see with clear resin of course but you got plastic no mixing that's great one thing i think this stuff might be really good for is water effects on minis if you just want to do a tiny bit of water i think this would be good so i'm going to try on this spider here to do a little pool of some of this stuff some little droplets on the fangs and we'll try to do a little poison effect here and see how that looks. All right, that totally worked. <laughs> Took under 30 seconds. I wanna see if I can create some drips or strands with this stuff. So let's see if we can just do a, a streak. Try to get an even narrower one. All right, so less than 30 seconds later, and let's see if I can remove these streaks without them breaking. Again, I'm sorry, you probably can't really see this too well because everything is, tr is clear. If I can take this little thread of resin, put a little dab more on here and a little more down here. The idea is to create a drip. Quite awkward, but <laughs> I got it on there. Let's glue it. You can add some more to the strand. That was a very quick and effective way to do a water drip or venom drip on a miniature. I've done similar things in the past using Vallejo's uh, water texture, basically make a strand and glue it, like the exact same process. And I will say, that I already like this better simply because this stuff always remains very soft and rubbery and it just, it's easy to snap. I don't know, it's not really great. It looks good, but I've never really trusted it on a model long term. This being resin uh, seems to be a lot stronger. Although it may be more brittle in the future. I don't know, either way, it, like it looks 
that's fantastic, right? That looks really cool. Now, the last thing I want to try is apparently you can tint this stuff using acrylic inks. I don't know about acrylic paints. It says inks, so I'm going to give that a go. Now, I'm going to use this Green Stuff World Intensity ink. I'm just going to keep it in the family, use their products, but I'm sure it if this works, it's going to work with things like the Liquitex acrylic inks or whatever brand. They're just acrylic inks, but I have a lot more variety of colors with this. Now, I don't know the best way to do this because I don't really want to mix something and pour it. Let's just see if I can mix it right in the mold. I'm going to try this door knocker here, this little skull, and actually let's grab two different colors of ink. Now, this actually isn't an ink, I don't think. It's fluor. It's from their paint line, but I'm going to try it anyway. I'm going to take a bit of this, mix it right in here. Let's see how it cures. Whoa, that's cool. <laughs> I guess that makes sense. This uh, orange, or orange, this green stuff is glowing like crazy because this UV light, I guess, is essentially, is ultraviolet light the same as a black light? I don't know, actually. Now, this may cause it to take longer to cure because there's colors blocking the light, maybe. I don't know, just a theory. No, it's already hard. It is already hard. That one is a success and that one is a success. So the door handle turned out really good. Now you can maybe see it a little bit better. So the acrylic inks absolutely work. So you could do this to make all sorts of liquid effects like water effects. You could do venom in different colors. You could do blood, lots of applications. This, the paint, it did mix, but it seemed to not mix as evenly. And I did get a big air bubble there, which could have just been me not working it into the mold enough. I think it could work. I'm gonna say probably better off keeping with actual acrylic inks, but there's a lot of colors on the market. There's more than enough colors in acrylic inks for this, to, for you to have everything you need. So that is fine. Well, after trying this, what is my final conclusion on the product? I have to say, it absolutely delivers on what it says it will do. It is an easy to use resin that you can pour in small items, cure it very quickly, no mixing. It's a good quality plastic resin. It's strong, it's not too brittle. It 100% works. You can mix it with acrylic inks, which is fantastic. I really like it. I do not think that this product is ideal for doing large items. And I would even consider something like this door as a large item. I think when you're casting things like this or bigger, you are better off with traditional two-part resins. It's probably gonna be more cost-effective. You're gonna cast a whole bunch of them. But if you wanna cast really little items, like if you have a bunch of little details that you wanna replicate and reuse, little embellishments, shields, skulls, whatever, little sci-fi greeble things. This stuff is 100% absolutely perfect. This is what I will turn to for this kind of stuff in the future. I will use this stuff sparingly. Uh, you know, I want one of these bottles to go a long way. Where I think this is really cool, the applications on miniatures, tiny little water effects, blood, venom. This is amazing. This is, this is really good. I like this. There are other ways of doing it. Like I said, I've done this in the past with the Vallejo water texture. You can do it with other resins, glues. There's, there are all a bunch of options, but this is a good one and I'm really happy with it. And of all the options that I've used, I think I like this one the best, at least for now on an, an initial test. Only time will truly tell. But overall, I really like this stuff. It's been sitting on my desk for longer than it should have. I was reluctant to try it. I was a little bit hesitant about it, but I'm definitely sold. I will put links to this stuff in the video description. You have the resin from Green Stuff World in a few different sizes. I believe there's only transparent at the moment, so there's just different sizes. Then the UV flashlight, like I said, I will also include links on Amazon if for whatever reason you wanna buy there instead, but I think it was actually more expensive even considering exchange rate on Amazon. But on Amazon, you can get bigger ones and different ones. So I'll give you guys the options. 
Like I said, again, I have a casual working relationship with Green Stuff World and they tend to create promo codes for you guys when I make a video about one of their products. I've reached out to them, asked them to make a code. So I will put that in the video description as soon as I get it. And then you guys can get a discount if you wanna buy this stuff or something else from them. I do get a small commission if you use that code, same as I would if you're purchasing something via an affiliate link on Amazon. But again, they did not uh, pay me to make this video. They don't even know I'm making it yet. So that's why I don't have the code ready to go. I was a little last minute on this. What do you guys think? Is this a gimmick? Is it cool? Probably not a product for just a starting crafter, somebody who's just getting into the hobby, but for anyone who's been doing this a while and is looking for neat other things to work with, ways to embellish miniatures, cast little details quickly, I think it's pretty fantastic. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it informative. What do you guys think of the format of actually just testing products live versus me just reviewing them afterwards. I kind of like this. You get the first impressions, you get to see me fumble around with it. It's kind of like if you were to just get it for yourself. So I don't know, let me know in the comment section all your thoughts, hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Hit subscribe if you're new here somehow. Check out the other videos, I got a whole bunch of them. That's it for this week, guys. No, sorry, that's it for this Tuesday. I'll see you again on Friday. Cheers.